What is your name, please? My name is Evelyn Boren. My name is Evelyn Boren. My name is Evelyn Boren. Only one of these ladies is the real Evelyn Boran. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, Betsy Palmer, plus 100 people in our studio audience on To Tell the Truth. This portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by Campbell's Bounty Stew. And here, sitting in for Bud Collier, is the producer of To Tell the Truth, Mr. Mark Goodson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Panel, first of all, I want to say there's good news and there's bad news today. The bad news is that Bud Collier is not feeling well, and I hope he's going to feel well again very soon. The good news is I get to do this. <laughs> and uh, I've never done it before. I'm a producer. It's much easier to be back there frowning at you. Right? <laughs> and you notice that because of me and my honor, the first spot has three beautiful girls. All right? <laughs> Betsy, you're also here uh, instead of Kitty, instead who is of off of the Met. I oh, think is she singing off or the Metropolitan? Yeah. Oh, and right. uh, I understand you're on your way to do some singing. I'm off to do, uh, well, why do you suppose I have a haircut again? <laughs> South Pacific. I'm off to do South Pacific again in California. In fact, we open next Tuesday, Jean-Pierre Aumont and myself. Ah, uh, sweet man. How about that? I hear he is a very, very nice yes. man. Okay. In uh, West Covina, can I say where? Yeah, you can carousel? say West Covina. Okay. All right. <laughs> now that we've finished the plugging, <laughs> today again we're going to give a hundred people in our studio audience a chance to vote electronically each time we play a game on To Tell the Truth. So audience, stay alert, please, and get your voting buttons ready. We'll be calling on you in a few seconds. Now, panel in front of you are today's envelopes, the contents of which you've never seen before. So open up envelope number one and follow along as I read. I, Evelyn Boren, am an underwater stunt woman. I've appeared in the swimming sequences of two James Bond movies. The most difficult stunt that I have performed was riding on the back of a five-ton killer whale. Swimming seems to come naturally to my family. My husband is a well-known underwater photographer, and our baby daughter has been swimming since she was four months old. Signed, Evelyn Boren. <laughs> And we will now start the questioning with Orson Bean. Orson. Thank you. Number three, you all three have beautiful tans and are fine-looking ladies. Number three, uh, in what movie did you ride on the back of a five-ton killer whale? Namu the Killer Whale. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that, but I saw it around the, the Nabe theaters. Uh, did you really do it, or was it yes. checked up in some way? You really did it? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Who, who was supposed to be doing it in the picture? Who was supposed to be yeah. doing it? Somebody else, I mean, or was it... Um, were you a character in the picture? Yes. Uh, she was Miss America once before. Uh, the lady that you were supposed mm. to be, I see. Number one, uh, in the James Bond pictures, uh, did you do any of the underwater stuff in the, in the big underwater fight sequence? Yeah, well, not in the underwater fight, but I was swimming underwater. Yes. Dubbing the actor. All right, uh, Betsy, please. Uh, number one, who plays James Bond in your film? Sean Connery. Sean Connery. And uh, what, what kind of build does Sean Connery have? What kind of build? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, what was the question physical. there? No. I would like to know what his build, his physical build is like. His build? Yes. He's yeah. built very well. <laughs> tall. No, but is he a tall man or a... Uh, He's fairly tall, yes. Fairly tall. Number two, uh, did you shoot all of the sequence in Florida or did you have to go elsewhere? No, we shot it in Nassau. In Nassau? Yes. Yes. And uh, did you shoot anywhere else? All right. Uh, Tom Poston, please. Uh, do you, uh, d number two, what happened to Namu? What happened to Namu? Well, Namu... No, to Namu. To Namu. Yeah. He was, uh, he died. Poor beastie. Over love of a girl, I think. Girl killer whale. Number one, do you, uh, do you go down into the water and hold your breath for a long, long time while they film it? Or do you have to keep coming back up and forth? Well, I have to, yes, I have to come back up and take a new breath. I can't stay that long. Number one, you're sometimes made up to resemble the actresses whose place you're taking in the underwater sequences, right? Yes. What about, now, number three has plenty of long hair. I can't tell about number two, but your hair seems short. Do you have to wear a fall or a wig? Yes, or I wear a wig. And it doesn't come off in the water? No. Peggy Cash. Uh, 
Hey, your number one was your killer whale team that you rode? Number one. I'm sorry. No, it wasn't. It was captured. Yeah, well, number three, how did you stay on? I mean, what did you use? Uh, suction cups on your feet or something? No, well, every time he went underwater, I got off him, and then I came on. They just shot him in sequences. That seems very bright to me. Number two, have you ever run into any poisonous fish down there, like uh, Portuguese men of war or stuff like that? Have you ever been hurt? I have not. You never have? No. Thank you. All right, sir, panel. Brilliant questioning. <laughs> now, without change of consultation, it's time for you to mark your ballots. And while you're voting, it's time for those in our studio audience group to vote. On the voting machines in front of each of you are three buttons. When I say vote, please select number one, number two, or number three. Are you ready? Vote. The music from another sphere. All right. Your votes have now been registered, and we're going to reveal the results in just a moment. But first, let's see how the panel votes. Now, Tom, what'd you vote for? Mark, I voted for number one. Uh, I thought she was a girl with a great sense of humor, and I think you would have to have that to do this kind of dangerous work and enjoy it. All right, Peggy, which one did you say? Well, I almost voted for one because she knew that Sean Connery is very well built, as indeed he is, but after all, anybody that saw the movies would know that. I voted for number two because she knew that poor little Namu the whale died. Oh. He did. He died in his nest. Oh. He, he was struck. It was the mating season, and he was trying to get out. Well, that's life. <laughs> Orson? I voted for number three. I think that she has a cool look about her that a pro would have to have, and that she could... Hold her breath for a long time. And Betsy. Well, I voted for number one because um, she speaks with a slight accent, and I would say that Lauren might be Scandinavian, and to me, she looks Scandinavian. All right. Well reasoned, interesting decisions. Panel, your votes are all in. Now let's find out. I'm very curious to find out who got the most votes from the studio audience. Now, our audience out there voted for number one and quite strongly for number one 46 votes out of 100 okay here we go will the real evelyn boren please stand up Fooled everybody except one, and, and uh, except, uh, yes, except one in the studio audience. Eh? Now, uh, Evelyn's baby daughter, by the way, is very cute, and you happen to have a picture of, uh, of Evelyn with her uh, mama underwater. Can we see that picture? Can you see that? Uh, oh! Yeah, you see the steps in there? Uh, Evelyn, uh, how, uh, how old is the baby in that, in that picture? She was nine months. And that picture was taken. Mm. Nine months. How old was she when she first went underwater? I started her at um, two months in the bathtub and four months in the swimming pool. Good job. All right. Okay, let's find out who the other lovely young ladies are. Number one got three votes, including the audience vote. Um, who are you and what do you do? My name is Heide Bester, and I work for reservations in British Overseas Airways. All right. And number, uh, number three, you've got one vote. How about you? My name is Joey Addison, and I'm a bunny at the New York Playboy Club. All right, that means there were three incorrect votes from the panel, plus one from our studio audience, which is a total of $400 for you ladies to divide. Thank you very much for being with us on To Tell the Truth. Okay, now let's meet our next team of challengers. There are millions of children in this country who have been deserted by either their mothers or their fathers. Finding these runaway parents and reuniting them with their families is the difficult job of one of these three gentlemen. What is your name, please? Solomon Z. Weiss. My name is Solomon Z. Weiss. My name is Solomon Z. Weiss. We shall play our game with Mr. Solomon Z. Weiss in just a minute after this special word of interest. Okay, panel, if you'll open your second set of envelopes while I read the statement. I, Solomon Z. Weiss, am executive director of the Family Location Service. It is our job to find husbands and wives who, for one reason or another, have deserted 
or become estranged from their families. Last year, we were involved with over 1,100 of these cases. Some nine million women and children in this country are the victims of desertion. Last year alone, aid to children whose parents had deserted them ran to over $900 million. The basic purpose of our organization is to reunite families whenever possible. And I'm proud to say that the Family Location Service is the only agency of its kind in the world. Signed, Solomon Z. Weiss. We'll continue this game with Solomon Z. Weiss in just a moment after this message. And for, for those of you who tune in a little late, I want to say that Bud Collier is not feeling too well today. We hope he's going to be back with us by tomorrow or Monday. The panel, these three gentlemen claim to be Solomon Z. Weiss. An audience thinks you're going to be asked to vote later on for the real person. Keep your eyes and ears open. Let's begin the questioning with Peggy Cass. Thank you. Um, number three, do you think that children are better off with two parents who don't get along or one parent when there's peace in the home? I would suggest one parent. Thank you. Well, number one, if somebody deserts, their ch you know, deserts his children or her children, how can you talk that person into coming back and living with the spouse and the children if he wasn't happy there in the first place? Well, we'll find out why he left. Oh, you do family counseling, in, in other words. A certain amount. Thank you. Number two, um, could you tell me what Parents Without Partners is? Number, uh, Number two. Parents Without Partners? Yeah. Where one is deserted, or one is divorced, or one has uh, died. Thank you. Uh, Orson? Number three, are you interested in finding the estranged spouse and arranging a financial contribution? Yes, the... sometimes. Is that the primary thing, or is it to really get them to come back and uh, sit around drinking a can of beer and watching TV at night with her shoes <laughs> off, like he used to, which is why she drove him out in the first place? Yes, <laughs> to try to make a happy at home. I see, all right. Number one, uh, now, this... Uh, Nine hundred million dollars. Who lays this out? Are you talking about relief or is well, that... the government of the United States? In what way do they lay it out? In, well, in relief aid payments? to dependent children. Aid to dependent children. That's right. Through relief payments at at the local level. Through relief payments at the local level. Yes. Uh, number. Uh, uh, Betsy Palms. Uh, number two. Does this um, help in, that you give to people include unwed mothers? No. Number one. Does um, your department have anything to do with young ladies who have children that don't, do not have uh, spouses? Yes. It does. Number three, when a husband uh, has left his family and doesn't de desire to return, uh, what do you say to him? We try to find out the reasons first for the leaving and try to effect some sort of reconciliation if possible. Is there such a point uh, in question of maybe forcing them to return to help support? Yes, support is mandatory in certain conditions. Tom Poston. Thank you, Mark. Number two, can you, can you force them to come back if they're out of the state? No, you can't force them, but there are some states which allow extradition. For this, uh, for this particular for, thing? To bring them back. Well, uh, number one, I'm very interested in the uh, way you go about changing the attitudes. Uh, what do you do to uh, talk a fella who has left his family into coming back and living with them? Is that number me, number one? Yes, please. Well, we try to make contact with the uh, missing person or the disappearing person and find out the causes. And we also try to find out from the deserted spouse uh, how she sees the point, how she sees herself. All right, panel. It's time to vote now. I think it's a very difficult choice myself. I do, too. I wouldn't know who to vote for. Without consultation, please mark your ballots. And audience, once again, it's time for you to vote on your little voting contractions. So when I say vote, select number one, number two, or number three. Are you ready? Vote. OK, your votes have been registered. And now let's see how the panel votes. Are you registered there, Tom? How did you vote, please? I finally chose number three. Uh, <clears throat> he didn't seem to be taking, I th I'm sure he takes his job very seriously, but he didn't seem to be taking this interrogation terribly seriously, and why should he? He knows all the answers. All right. Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for number three. He seemed to have a very pleasant, jovial personality, which is what it would take to have some guy that deserted his wife and ten kids to come back home again. The Finks. <laughs> Orson. I don't know. There's two sides to every story, Peggy. I, uh, 
I voted for number one. I think he looks uh, efficient, trustworthy. He looks a little like Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> I remember that show very well. And <laughs> Betsy, your vote, please. And I voted for number one, too. And it was because when he was standing up on the platform, his trousers looked as though he sat down more than the other men did. And so maybe he wasn't so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, sir, you picked on the basis of shiny pants. We'll see how our audience voted and meet the real Solomon Z. Weiss in just a minute after this word of interest. All right, panel, the, uh, the votes are evenly divided, as a matter of fact, by a left and a right. Down the other end, Tom and Peggy are for number three, and Orson and Betsy are for number one. Now, let's see who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our audience voted for number three by 55 votes out of 100. Very good. Now, let's find out which of these three gentlemen, indeed, heads the family location service. So will the real Solomon Z. Weiss please stand up? Thank you. Incidentally, the Family Location Service is the beneficiary of the Federation of Jewish Philanthropies of New York. And now, let's find out who the other gentlemen are. Number two, will you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Ralph Cohen. I'm sales manager, manager for the Pacific Bag and Burlap Company in New York. And number three, you've got two votes from the panel and you fooled the audience. Tell us about yourself. My name is Sidney Epstein, and I'm an executive with the Columbia Cement Company in Brooklyn, manufacturers of adhesives. Well, gentlemen, you've got two incorrect votes from the panel, plus one from our studio audience. The total of $300 for you to divide it was a very interesting spot, and thank you very much for being with us on To Tell the Truth. <laughs> We shall return in just a moment after this message from Bristol Myers. Okay, panel, you were marvelous today. I enjoyed it very much. We oh, enjoyed you. Thank you very much. And so until uh, tomorrow, this is Mark Goodson sitting in for Bud Collier, and as he does, reminding you to tell the truth. This portion of To Tell the Truth was brought to you by New Prolong, the floor wax made to be washed with detergent. To Tell the Truth with the Mark Goodson Bill Cotton production, Johnny Olson speaking, the program was pre-recorded. I understand you're on your way to do some singing. I'm off to do, uh... Well, why do you suppose I have a haircut again? <laughs> South Pacific. I'm off to do South Pacific again in California. In fact, we open next Tuesday, Jean-Pierre Aumont and myself. Ah, uh, sweet man. How about that? I hear he is a very, very nice man. Yes. Okay. In uh, West Covina, can I say where? Yeah, you can carousel? say West Covina. Okay. All right. <laughs> now that we've finished the plugging, <laughs> today again we're going to give 100 people in our studio audience a chance to vote electronically each time we play a game on To Tell the Truth. So audience, stay alert, please, and... Get your voting buttons ready. We'll be calling on you in a few seconds. Now, panel in front of you are today's envelopes, the contents of which you've never seen before. So open up envelope number one and follow along as I read. I, Evelyn Boren, am an underwater stunt woman. I've appeared in the swimming sequences of two James Bond movies. The most difficult stunt that I have performed was riding on the back of a five-ton killer whale. Swimming seems to come naturally to my family. My husband is a well-known underwater photographer, and our baby daughter has been swimming since she was four months old. Signed, Evelyn Boren. And we will now start the questioning with Orson Bean. Orson. Thank you. Number three, you all three have beautiful tans and are fine-looking ladies. Number three, uh, in what movie did you ride on the back of a five-ton killer whale? Namu the Killer Whale. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that, but I saw it around the, the Nave theaters. Uh, did you really do it, or was it yes. checked up in some way? You really did it? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Who, who was supposed to be doing it in the picture? Who was supposed to be yeah. doing it? Somebody else, I mean, or was it... 
Um, Were you a character in the picture? Yes. Uh, she was Miss America once before. Uh, the lady that you were supposed mm. to be asking. Number one, uh, in the James Bond pictures, uh, did you do any of the underwater stuff in the, in the big underwater fight sequence? Yeah, well, not in the underwater fight, but I was swimming underwater. Yes. Dubbing the actor. All right, uh, Betsy, please. Uh, number one, who plays James Bond in your film? Sean Connery. Sean Connery. And uh, what, what kind of build does Sean Connery have? What kind of build? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, what was the question there? Build. I would like to know what his build, his physical build is like. His build? Yes. He's yeah. built very well. <laughs> tall. No, but is he a tall man? Or a, uh... He's fairly tall, yes. Fairly tall. Number two, uh, did you shoot all of the sequence in Florida, or did you have to go elsewhere? No, we shot it in Nassau. In Nassau? Yes. Yes. And uh, did you shoot anywhere else? All right. Uh, Tom Poston, please. Uh, do you, uh, do, number two, what happened to Namu? What happened to Namu? Well, Namu... No, to Namu. To Namu. Yeah. He was, uh, he died. Poor beastie. Over love of a girl, I think. Girl killer whale. Number one, do you... Mark, I voted for number one. Uh, I thought she was a girl with a great sense of humor, and I think you would have to have that to do this kind of dangerous work and enjoy it. All right, Peggy. Which one did you well, say? I almost voted for one because she knew that Sean Connery is very well built, as indeed he is, but I thought anybody that saw the movies would know that. I voted for number two because she knew that poor little Namu the whale died. Oh. He did. He died in his nest. Oh. He, he was trying, it was the mating season and he was trying to get out. Well, that's life. <laughs> Orson? I voted for number three. I think that she has a cool look about her that a pro would have to have and that she could hold her breath for a long time. And Betsy. Well, I voted for number one. Because um, she speaks with a slight accent, and I would say that Lauren might be Scandinavian, and to me, she looks Scandinavian. All right. Well reasoned. Interesting decisions. Pat, your votes are all in. Now let's find out. I'm very curious to find out who got the most votes from the studio audience. Now our audience out there voted for number one, and quite strongly for number one. Forty-six votes out of a hundred. Okay. Here we go. Will the real Evelyn Boren? Please stand up. <laughs> Fooled everybody except one and, and uh, except, uh, yes, except one in the studio audience. Eh? Now. What is your name, please? My name is Evelyn Boren. My name is Evelyn Boren. My name is Evelyn Boren. Only one of these ladies is the real Evelyn Boran. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, Betsy Palmer, plus 100 people in our studio audience on To Tell the Truth. This portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by Campbell's Bounty Stew. And here, sitting in for Bud Collier, is the producer of To Tell the Truth, Mr. Mark Goodson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Panel, first of all, I want to say there's good news and there's bad news today. The bad news is that Bud Collier is not feeling well, and I hope he's going to feel well again very soon. The good news is I get to do this. <laughs> and I've never done it before. I'm a producer. It's much easier to be back there frowning at you. Right? <laughs> and you notice that because of me and my honor, the first spot has three beautiful girls. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Betsy, you're also here uh, instead of Kitty, instead who is of off of the Met. I oh, think singing or the yeah, oh, and uh, do you uh, do you go down into the water and hold your breath for a long, long time while they film it, or do you have to keep coming back up and forth? Well, I have to. Yes, I have to come back up and take a new breath. I can't stay that long. Number one, you sometimes made up to resemble the actresses whose place you were taking in the underwater sequences, right? Yes. What about now? Number three has plenty of long hair. I can't tell about number two, but your hair seems short. Do you have to wear a fall or a wig? Yes, or I wear a wig. And it doesn't come off in the water? No. Peggy Cash. Uh, thank you. Number one, was your killer whale tame that you rode? Number one. I'm sorry. No, it wasn't. It was captured. 
Yeah, well, number three, how did you stay on? I mean, what did you use? Uh, suction cups on your feet or something? No, well, every time he went underwater, I got off him, and then I came on. They just shot him in sequences. That seems very bright to me. Number two, have you ever run into any poisonous fish down there, like uh, Portuguese men of war or stuff like that? Have you ever been hurt? I have not. You never have? No. Thank you. All right, uh, panel, brilliant questioning. <laughs> now, without change of consultation, it's time for you to mark your ballots. And while you're voting, it's time for those in our studio audience group to vote. On the voting machines in front of each of you are three buttons. When I say vote, please select number one, number two, or number three. Are you ready? Vote. The music from another sphere. All right. Your votes have now been registered, and we're going to reveal the results in just a moment. But first, let's see how the panel votes. Now, Tom, what would you vote for?